there, avid listeners. Thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today, we're going to be talking about Dragon Bird in the Fern by Laura Rukert. This was the Book of the Month winner here on Sin's Workshop. So, woo, here we are reviewing it. Um, I do have to say, this was a very interesting book. What really struck out to me the most was the characterization of Princess Jara. So pronounce I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right it's J-I-A-R-A Jara so it's clear she has a lot of insecurities um the story does open up with she's trying to perform a ritual to ease her sister's ghost because before the story begins her sister has been murdered so she's trying to do what she can to ease her ghost because when someone in her country is murdered their ghost comes back to hurt the people that loved her until her until their you know murder is solved so she's trying to ease this ghostly presence um because it's hurting her her younger brother her you know people she cares about un until you know they're able to solve the murder lo and behold here comes the king that her sister was supposed to marry and everyone's just like, well, marry Giara. And she's completely insecure. She's like, I have no, I was not, nope. <laughs> I was not g- groomed to be a queen. Um, and she also has a lot of insecurities because she has trouble reading. She has dyslexia. And I think it's really great that she has dyslexia because she's over come she she overcomes it she overcomes a lot of those insecurities throughout this entire narrative because she has to she has to and not just she has to she wants to uh you know she's marrying a foreign king she has to learn a foreign language and she has to learn to read a foreign language she has you know trouble enough reading her own language so it's a lot of challenges for this character so you admire that However, however reluctantly she meets these challenges, she is meeting these challenges head on and she is adapting and she is growing as a character. I found that really compelling about her. And you're seeing her journey, you're seeing her growth, you're seeing her open up throughout the entire story from beginning to end. You know, she's going to this foreign land and come to find out she loves these people she loves her her new husband she loves their culture she wants to do nothing but protect them which is what pushes her to really learn this language because she wants to help the people in her community she wants to help keep them safe she wants to govern them fairly she wants to rule over them in a wonderful way with her husband who is also much loved by the people um now i do understand it might be a little off-putting for some readers like oh she has to marry her sister's betrothed it could it does have the potential to be off-putting but this is why it wasn't off-putting he is such a kind person um and these are two people who have always kind of They've, they've had this mutual attraction to one another. And Yara constantly feels guilty. Like, she's constantly guilty. She's like, oh my god. I finally get to marry this man that I've been admiring from afar. But only because my sister is dead. She thinks that makes her a horrible person. Um, I don't think it makes her a horrible person. And... I like their dynamic. Because she's really... He, like I said, he's very con- he's very considerate of her to the point where when they propose the wedding treaty, he wants to talk to her privately. And he his, his first question is, are you sure? Like, we don't have to do this. He's very clear cut. He's like, I will still form trade agreements with your country even if we're not married. He's like, you don't have to marry me. Um, I will be there for your country. It's perfectly okay. He's like, are you being forced? And she answers no. And he's like, are you sure? He is very, very respectful of her as a whole. He listens to her. He 
doesn't doubt her even when she points out things to him that you know how in some books they're just like oh well I've known this person my whole life you're wrong he takes everything she says into consideration and he investigates he listens to her he is respectful of her and he won't move further in their relationship until she turns 18 he's like no absolutely not we're not you know we're not going to consummate the marriage until you are 18 it's just not happening it's not happening he like i said he's very respectful he's very charming he listens to her you can tell he's in awe of her and he loves her and that is what i like about their relationship as a whole their growth as a couple they take the time to get to know one another they take the time to become companions on I guess on an emotional and intellectual level before they take it to an intimate level. And I think that just makes the intimacy of their characterization of their dynamic even more worthwhile to read. Seeing how cleanly it's developed, seeing how lovely it is, seeing how much they care about one another as friends first and companions rather than lovers. And I think that's great about them. Um, and as for the story, you know, I really do think it was a good story. I liked the pacing. I will say this, that first chapter and a half, the pacing is a little slow, but again, you're drawn in by the mystery, like, oh boy, her sister's murdered. Oh boy, her betrothed's here. Oh boy. You're drawn in by the tension, even though the pacing is lacking a little bit. Now, what I can say is I do wish the pacing had been a little bit more sturdy. I wish the pacing had been a little bit more fast-paced. Uh, there is some world building that's going on, so I do excuse it. And I like how the author doesn't stop world building throughout the story. I like when authors do that because when you unload all the information all at once for the reader... As they're reading the story, they're kind of going to forget things. And also, it really does bog down the opening of the story. So, I like that Rukart continues to build up her mythology and her fantasy throughout the entire narrative. I think it's worthwhile. It does add to the mystique of the story. It does add to the fantasy of the story. Ultimately, I think it was a really well done story. And completely worthy of the book of the month title. So thank you all of you for voting for it. Um, it kind of won in the landslide. <laughs> Considering all the tiles I was up against, I honestly wasn't expecting that. But, you know, I really do think it is a good story. It does have a lot of fantasy with the Watchers and the Earth and the Earthwalkers. So the Watchers are the gods of King Raphar's country, and Earthwalkers that's what you would call a vengeful, vengeful ghost. I like how they come alive in the story. Like at first, you know, they're just like oh, be they're just beings, right? But then, as the story is progressing, you are seeing more and more and more of them come alive, of the mystery behind them, of what they mean to the people, what they mean to Giara now that she is a part of this country. So I do like that the author did devote time to continuing the world building throughout the plot, as well as building up the mythology and the fantasy of the story throughout the plot. So I do have to give... A dragon bird in the fern. Mm, four to five stars. Uh, not quite mind blowing, but good. I do think it is quite an enjoyable read. And I do love that you have a character here who has dyslexia, which for some people can be quite debilitating. And yet she meets those challenges head on and comes up on top of it like anyone else can. You know, it just takes a little bit of perseverance. And I know for a lot of people, it's it's really tough. So to see someone 
like that um or someone with that disability really just become the hero i think it does send a message to readers like you might have a problem reading you know might be a struggle might be difficult but any difficulty along with some perseverance you can do it just don't give up and i like that message behind the story so if you want to go ahead and purchase the book please remember to purchase the book from your local bookseller or online book retailer all i ask is that you support the bookstores in any way that you can could be an indie bookstore in your neighborhood could be the book Similian or the Barnes Noble nearby your house. All I ask is that you support your bookstores, just not Amazon. <laughs> Heck, you can even buy the book directly from your publisher, from the publisher online. I just ask, just don't purchase from Amazon. They get enough business, support the bookstores. If money's tight, check out the book from your local library. Libraries are a great resource for the community, and they are there for you to help foster that love of reading. And on that note, I hope you all continue to support me here on Sin's Workshop by liking this podcast or sharing it with all your book-loving friends. Honestly, spreading the word is, means so much to me, more than anything. You can also become a supporter on Anchor FM, my recording platform, for 99 cents a month. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading. <laughs>